way back in 2200 BC, when uh, the advent of uh, what you call it, Chakolithic period, what they say. That means from Stone Age to you are entering the stage of the metal. That is when they found the fish hooks of 2200 BC. But they don't know how to, they know how to harvest fish, but not the processing aspect of it. Coming to the maybe 16th century, one of the French physicians who was there in India, Barney, he worked in Mughal time, uh, the fourth son of uh, Shah Jahan. Why I'm giving example here is, he wrote something very, very important comment about the Indian country in those days. There are so many ways to come to India, but there is no way to go back. That means there are plenty of things in which included fish. Again, coming back to the talk of Dr. Salim, what he told about the digitization and all. Recent article, it, it, it says, during black magic time or those days, the whole day effort could harvest only five bushels of food grains. But as of today, because of the mechanization and everything, 30,000 bushels can be harvested. Why I'm giving example here is, basically the pandemic, we could overcome just because of the science and technology development. Within one year, we could isolate the, the virus, purify, characterize, and then on top of it, our scientist colleagues, they come out with the vaccines. This is not the case way back in 13th century, where the black magic, if the farmers go to the agriculture field, they contact the disease. If they don't go, they stop to death. So from that time to today, we could overcome all this pandemics and all in a stipulated time. So coming back to the antibacterial resistance, how it became a major threat. So it is known, I'm not going to give complete details of aquaculture, everybody, I, it is understood, everybody knows all these things. So the major thing is, is the projection saw by 2030, it's going to, we need to double the production. Again, the population of the world from 7.5 billion is going to be 10 billions by 2050, right? So unless we produce production is increased and the productivity, both are different things. They increase to a substantial level to meet the nutritional requirements of the country, food and nutritional requirements of the country in a particular world in general, it is not possible in unit time and space. The unit time is 2050. So coming back to the fisheries, this is the only one sector in which it can take care, I'll show you the coming slides. The major thing is why we are, if we use, unlike in terrestrial animals, when we use the antibiotics or antimicrobials in case of fish, the second part of the slide, it indicates the fish cannot metabolize. What does it mean? 75% nearly of it, it will go waste. It go waste means it will go lie on the pond that, that result in the development of antimicrobial resistance. So, why we are using that part, I'm going to come and discuss in brief. So low and middle income countries, especially in the absence of any technology or something like that, the cure all that is the basis for using the antimicrobials. And there is no alternate other than increasing the productivity or production to meet these strategies to compensate the weakness they're going for the antimicrobials. This slide, what I want to show here is, this is one technology, I'm sorry. If you just see this slide, aquaculture is the only sector compared with the chicken, eggs, pig, or human beings, or cattle, or milk. Aquaculture is the only technology that, that has shown a tremendous progress last 50 years. Again, some of the speakers, what they said is, the, uh, in case of marine sector, the catches are coming down. Imagine way back in 1950s, where it is 71.1% is the marine catches. Whereas in culture, we are getting only 29.9. 
But in 50 years course of time, it has changed. It become completely reversed. Your whole total production of the fish, 71.1% coming from the aquaculture and the remaining 29% you are getting from the marine. The major aspect here is in India, of course, I'll give you an example. The total fish scenario of the financial point of view, it is 1 trillion rupees per year. It is 1 trillion, I repeat, 1 trillion rupees. Apart from $7 billion worth of export, the domestic consumption, again, I will tell you, we are not giving much importance about the quality and safety point of view. But the thing is, this is going to be, by 2024, double. Two trillion rupees worth, it is very much possible within this stipulated time. Unfortunately, the major aspect is the fish we consume is always sold on the roadside of this one trillion rupees. And the footwear we purchase are based on the air conditioned place. They need to be some paradigm shift. So, this is one of the experiments why we are concentrating again on the AMR thing is. Professor Roy Krishoni, when he carried out the experiments, it is available in the net also. It's difficult to show that, uh, what you call the video. What I want to tell you here is, in 11 days span of time, when they used a big plate, within 11 days, the thousand-fold increase in the AMR resistance took place. The bacteria, they developed complete resistance by thousand-fold. That's very, very important and important finding. So what are the things you can come across? The potential routes of oh, what you call the transmission of AMR. Of course, this most of you people have seen it. I just want to give you an example of uh, the, you can see the, what you call the eight, number eight, the flight also shown. Just imagine, of course, way back in 2017, when they tried, among the 9,728 flights, in a given time, they are on the air. And they were carrying 1,270,406 people. In other words, in given time, 1.2 million odd, they are in the air. Are they going to be in the air for a long time? No. They're going to keep moving between the countries, between the continents in a shorter span of time. In other words, your antigen movement, if possible, the aim are also being carried out from one place to other. And there are so many examples out here I have given. Because of time constraint, I'm not going to deal with completely. I hope the people, I mean, uh, who are attending, they're able to get the picture out of it. So what are the factors? If we understand the factors that are responsible for this, we can definitely have the controlling, the contributing factors we can understand we can develop the control measures. So these factors, basically, they can be broadly classified as research level, farm level, fund level, industry level, practicing level, and regulatory level. Basically, these are the factors. Once we understand them, it's easy to develop the control measures. Of course, you have the intrinsic resistance and acquired resistance. We talk in terms of bacteria out here. Again, they have natural traits, species of JNS species, and inherently structural, structural or functional characteristics of the bacteria to tolerate. For example, you have vertical transmission and you have horizontal transmission, especially the horizontal part of it that goes for transformation, transduction, and conjugation. Sometimes the other one is the vertical simplification. So what makes this aquaculturist to go for the antibiotic usage? One is the economic factors, the individual factors, the operational and the governance factors. So as I have shown in the second slide, lack of affordable and practical alternatives to antibiotics such as vaccines. Other thing is easy accessibility. Again, I just give one example. In the United States, if you go to a shop, if you ask for antibiotic, they will not give you without prescription, but you can get the gun very easily. That's a different aspect. But in India, you can very easily get antibiotic, but not the ammunition and gun unless you have a license. So the fact is, 
these are some economic factors. The other individual factors is lack of awareness, what could the impact of this one. Coming back to the operational and dominant factors, that includes high disease burden, inadequate diagnostic capacity. Again, we'll be dealing with this in the coming few minutes. That's why I'm not going in deep. So other thing is enforcement. You don't, there is no law that is exists that can contain or stop the individual to go for it. Then, they get, then there are plausible hotspots for emergence of antimicrobial resistance, resistance bacteria or the genes. The water they use, it can be contaminated or production of early life stages. For example, brood stock, the hatchery, when they're transporting through the waters, the water they may use the antibiotic or the, the brood stock level. In all cases, they can play a very, very important role in the development of AMR. And the growth stages, what I have told you just now, the introduction of water contaminated with antibiotic residues and antibacterial resistant bacteria, antibiotic resistant bacteria from the environment you get. A long time exposure during the transportation and cumulative effect of these antibiotics of the earlier stages which we use for production. And during the harvesting time, possibly in liquid, during transport of live animals that can encourage the emergence of this thing. The consumption pattern, again, contaminated food by especially human biota or in agriculture, the water, runoff water that is coming, it's contaminated, the wastewater. It so happens, like Dr. Vision also told in the beginning about the, uh, the possible contamination of these waters. One time, one person's inlet is other person's outlet. If the inlet is contaminated, it keeps on going. And drug producers, there is no handling properly, especially in case of antibiotics in this country. The disposal of the antibiotic is a major thing. So they can get into the system, especially the environment, subsequently to the aquatic system. The wastewater, but all the potential interventions, again, improved hygiene and biosecurity, use of specific pathogen free stock that we're going to talk again, the development of breeds and so on and so forth. Again, these are the design and implementation of disincentives for AB, antibacterial use, antimicrobial use, if you use, antibiotics use, disincentives, or you give the incentives for production of antibiotic producers. That is one thing. Similarly, development and application of certification, which is not there so far, and creation and implementation of AB or awareness campaigns that I'm going to deal again. So these are the application of antibiotics in the fish pond, the foresight, good aquaculture practices, risk support of government to prevent AB, subsidize or support during the aquaculture production. One example I can give is in, in our state of Kerala, after the floods, the, the culture production has come down, not because the aquaculturists are interested, because in the event of flood or any other natural calamity, they are not able to get the insurance coverage. That's why they did not go for the aquaculture. These are some impediments which we come across during the course of the runoff of the antibiotics that I have told you, untreated wastewater, this we already discussed. Resistance bacteria, such as fecal coliforms, fecal streptococci, all these things through the, especially the fecal material, they should not come in contact with the aquatic system. So the regulatory approaches that I told you is they will affect the enforcement can lead to substantial reduction. In developed countries, in a global scenario, when we watch coming few minutes, I can tell you what's happening there in high income countries, as per the World Bank, I'm going to show. They can afford, but when they have not used antimicrobials, the production was far good in control conditions. That is, the, it was highly demonstrated in the developed countries. And fish health standards also, it is possible to hit you high growth without using the antimicrobials. The efficient surveillance system is another aspect which we need. So factors influence the misuse or overuse, both promoting substances, which are already discussed, poor quality of the medicines, weak laboratory capacity to detect AMR rapidly. That I'm going to tell. The inadequacy of the documentation of import export of the antimicrobials. 
which is not there as of today. So same antimicrobial use across all the sectors, not only in aquaculture, in all the sectors, it is not there. And countrywide trend that I'm going to show, then regulation of the use of antimicrobials based on AMA trend across the states in the country, it is not there. Inadequacy of the industries that we already discussed. So these need to be strengthened, the diagnostic facility, evaluation of AMR and verification of development of AMR across the sector. Why we have formed in for that I'm going to tell. Understanding all these things, then abolishing the use of antimicrobials for non-therapeutic purposes also one of the important aspects. These are all coming under the control measures that I'm going to show on slide. So the availability of the quality seeds with the specific pathogen free tested, availability of quality feeds, advancing the technologies to control the water quality, which is the primary factor involved in development of AMR in fisheries. So these are the things which we already discussed. In case of vaccines, we have inactivated, attenuated, recombinant, the probiotics, prebiotics, symbiotics, and in, in other case, we have foreign quenching and bacterial, antibacterial peptides, phytochemicals, CRISPRs, nanoparticles. And one more important thing what I want to tell you is uh, the false therapy, what we are trying to do. In fact, our chair, Professor Dev Kapila, is our partner in sort of together we are working on these aspects. In fact, recently we came out with a publication that's giving complete details about the uh, Vibrio's photo control. That's one of the major aspects. Coming back to phases, once we identify they are multi-host specific, what we did is we isolated, in other words, previously you're testing with one bacteria. Again, you keep on testing all the things. But at a time, using this E. coli isolates, we could get the multi-host, the viruses that are multi-host specific. Not just we have isolated or characterized that virus, that the methodology we have, apart from publishing or something like that, we gave it to other labs to see the efficacy of that one, and we are getting very good result. This can be one of the important aspects in controlling the, the bacterial diseases and all, so that we don't have to use uh, using a fire, fast therapy also you can inactivate the AMR bacteria. That's what we are trying to do in our DBT project. So this is the whole tripartite agreement. Again, we'll come out. This uh, AM, AMU use, the capacity enabling policy, this we are going to come out again. So this is what I want to tell is, if you see the high income groups, the national action plan, 81%. Whereas if you see the low income, it is only 16. In total, Basically, these are, I'm showing here 158 countries. I keep on showing in other tables also. What I want to tell here is the high income group countries, they have national action plans. But when it comes to low income, it is only 68%. Similarly, upper middle income also, it's very less. And One Health, very important aspect. The One Health approach, that is the only option that is left where it is a multi thronged approach. You can try. Again, if you see high income group, it is 79%, whereas in low income group, it's just 28%. We'll come back to that point. In total, what you have in one health approach as of today, in the sense just two years back when they accumulated all the data, they found only 47% of the total 158 countries based on the World Bank classification. They are following one health. This needs are very, very important. Similarly, awareness campaigns is very important. We, in Kerala, what they did is state government, very, very important aspect is AMR literacy. The campaign, you take to the field, you take to the stakeholders, you take to the aquaculturist, whoever is on your way. That's one way you can get the very good result out of it. That is what it is showing, the awareness campaign. Similarly, the antimicrobial resistance, how the pattern rate is there. Same, high income groups, the percentage is in case of animals, their surveillance programs. 
surveillance is very, very important thing. But if you see in the low income group, it's just 24% in case of food and in humans, it's 52%. This need a lot of improvement in the coming years. Um, unless we meet this, this thing, SDG is not possible. So sustainable development goals, if you want to meet by 2030, this has to be changed. How ne it needs to be changed, that I'll discuss. Again, for sale and use, if you see the picture, the low income groups is hardly 12%. For the human consumption, and in case of the antimicrobial intended to be used with the animals, it's far less. So the control programs, if you see, again, it's only as of two years back, it is 61%. So these are the important aspects, again, in relation to terrestrial and aquatic animals. In total, as of today, the practices, hygiene practices are far less. In the absence of that one, there is every possibility that distance will be developed. And similarly, antimicrobial use, it, it, it gives a complete picture out here. So after seeing all these things in 2019, the United Nations Secretary General, what he observed is important aspects, urgency, one health approach, stakeholder engagement, implementation of national action plan, and resource mobilization. The low income groups, unless they go for resource mobilization, it's very difficult to implement all these things. These are the things what, if you see the inputs and activity, sorry, activities, all these things, what can be the outcome you can. So one more aspect what I have observed is, if you want to carry out the AMR, it's not just you can do plating or trying to isolate one bacteria or other. What is more important is, you need to have the standard operation procedures that we have developed in due course of time. What is the scope? What are the definition and deviations? Infrastructure biosafety requirements, personnel requirement, sampling, isolation and identification of a specific organism, phenotypic determination of AMR, genotypic determination of AMR, guiding standard for interpretation, QC strains. All these things are very, very important things unless you develop based on the SOP, the data that cannot be used. So the other words, what in India, what we did so far, we have developed the INFOR. It's a technical program of ICR. We are employing, of course, implementing with the help of your favor. You said, this is to document the AMR in different production systems, describe the spread of resistance and all, the identify the trends. Our aim is to formulate the strategies here. And what is it is as of now, 18 organizations are there, 15 of ICR, three state departments, total 20, cent, 20 centers across the country we are operating. That includes live, nine from the fisheries and 11 from the livestock. So our vision is to undertake the surveillance of AMR in target to quantity its burden, quantifying the burden, whatever, and monitor the spatial and temporal trends of AMR in India, improve awareness. So we are also partnered with the, Kerala is the first state in the country, state action plan, antimicrobial resistance state action plan. Then whether it is in devising a system to train the people or build the capacity or the surveillance in the fisheries, that includes in the hospital spot it is, and, and also in the water body, especially. We are carrying out in uh, taking into consideration the state needs. This is a very important aspect. And one more thing is we are concentrating basically on a particular pathogen. But that left, we left that concept way back in four or five years back. We come out with a project. One of my colleagues, uh, Dr. Nilwan, is going to present a paper. Apart from the salmonella or vibrios or something like that, we are looking for the pathogens. Not pathogens or emerging and re emerging kind. What does it mean? They are also pathogenic to fish, aquaculture pathogens, and they are also pathogenic to human beings. That is one thing we are concentrating. And my other colleague, Mr. Ranjit, Again, 
all the times we concentrate on the pathogenic bacteria, it's you get a good result. That's good. You can publish the papers. But the AMR is not confined to only the pathogenic bacteria. They are everywhere. So if you take the heterotrophic bacteria, you get a complete picture that is going to present now. Thank you very much. That's all. Thank you.